Good evening. Merry Christmas to all of you here in person and those worshiping with us online. Welcome to our celebration, the Nativity of our Lord. I have one announcement, and it is that we will continue our celebration tomorrow at 10 a.m., and all are welcome. Thank you. Behold, I give you good news of great joy, which shall be all to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. We begin with our rites of preparation and entrance. The confession will be at a later time in the service, and that will be followed by the processional hymn. So all who are able, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from
true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day awake to the brightness of his glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all those boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. second reading is recorded in the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. 
while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem all from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
ancient Israel sitting in the darkness of despair and it had been embroiled in conflict with its neighbors, the prophet Isaiah brings a message of hope, the promise of a Messiah king. We ponder the imponderable mystery of this night of wonder, this holy night, that in the darkness of earth's night there comes to birth one who is to be light for the world. And he comes as a helpless infant, as in the The giver of every good gift sends his very best, sends him to redeem a world lost in sin and alienation, sends one who is a perfect expression of God's own fatherly heart of love. One who in the course of his life and in the living out of his destiny would fully and perfectly accomplish his Father's will. But to do so, he had to be fully immersed in this world and in the stream of human history, beginning life as an embryo, then a fetus, then a newborn. The miracle was present in Mary's womb. The miracle was present in Bethlehem's manger. The prophet Isaiah, many centuries earlier, points to the birth of one in whom the hopes and longings of God's people would be fulfilled. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, authority rests on his shoulders. In a day, my sisters and brothers, when governments, even our own, are often fragile, we stand in amazement at these words. The government of the whole world is supposed to lie on the weak shoulders of a newborn child. Truly, these shoulders will indeed carry the burden of the entire world. With the carrying of the cross, all the sin and distress and sorrow of this world will be loaded upon those shoulders. And those shoulders will not break under the load, but will carry it away to the depths of the tomb. Truly, this is a child born for us. And when the prophet tries to find words to speak of this child of promise and give him names and titles, the words just tumble over one another, word combinations never heard before. Wonderful counselor for those who come to know this child, his Every word and deed is wonderful, and they will find in him comfort and perfect counsel in all their trials and troubles. Mighty God, the expression in the Hebrew is El Gibor. You can just sort of feel the strength in that expression. El Gibor, a God of heroic strength. He lies helpless in the manger, a human and of flesh and blood, like us, our brother. Where is the divinity? Where is the strength of this child? It is the strength of a love that holds nothing back, a love that knows no limit, a love that can bridge the gap that has opened up between God and humanity. 
He shall be called Everlasting Father, the one who is the human face of God for us, the one who will be able to say, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Go to see the Son of God in the manger, and there find that his Father, the God of the universe, has become your Father, too. Prince of Peace, in him we have peace with God, and in him we are able to learn the ways of peace with one another. In him we are able to learn the ways of war no more, and put an end to strife. If you feel yourself judged and condemned because of what you have done or what you have left undone, go to the child in the manger who died on the cross for you and, and receive the peace of God as a gift. If you have fallen into strife with brothers and sisters, come see God's Son who has become our brother and wants to reconcile us one with one another and to live together as brothers and sisters. Wonderful counsel, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All these names are implied in the one name, Jesus, and in the title, Messiah, or Christ the Lord, announced by the angel to the shepherds in the fields of Bethlehem. Good news of great joy for all people, said the angel, for to you, yes, to you, lowly, Shepherds held beneath contempt by the high and the mighty. To you is born a Savior, tightly wrapped in swaddling bands and lying in a manger. This child is born for you, for all of us, to us a child is born. Kneel before him and see in him your God. Trust him in life and death. Let him feed you at his table. Follow him daily in the way of compassion, love, purity of heart, and willing service. Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom we the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Things be 
eternity's sake. Jesus sent me. Because he died for you, he died for me. So from death we can be free. Jesus is he.
church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers, you may stand, sit, or kneel. In joy and wonder, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Your infinite love is born to us this night. With choirs of angels, the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people, God of grace. You are pleased to dwell with your creatures, and the whole earth sings for joy. Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxies. Guide us to be wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. God of grace. Your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. God of grace. You cherish those who are most vulnerable. Protect infants and children, and bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth, attend the dying, and relieve any who are in pain. Shelter refugee families and those who have no home. God of grace. Your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help all for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us who are experiencing distress of body or mind, missed loved ones, or grieving. God of grace. You welcome those who have died into the joyous light of glory. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with lives of faith and humility. Inspire us by their example to love you by serving others. God of grace. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us also pray for the forgiveness of our sins. All who are able may kneel, and we will reflect silently for a few moments, and then pray the prayer.
Son, Jesus Christ, into the world, that by his life, death, and resurrection he might reconcile us to himself, and has committed unto his church the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ our Savior Jesus is always. And also again, bear the peace as we are able.
beginning you created the world through him who is the word made flesh. You remembered your promises to Israel that from the root of Jesse a new shepherd would come. At the appointed time you sent the angel Gabriel to Mary, the humble virgin of Nazareth. And by the Spirit's power your son was conceived. In humble surroundings she gave birth to Emmanuel, God born for us, God with us, God in the midst of us. We praise you for your great goodness and laud your magnificent love. A love that would lead this child to become the man for others, the one who takes away all helplessness, doubt, and fear, the one who in love bore the Holy Cross. By that same Spirit that brought this new life to birth, empowered his ministry, and raised him at his resurrection, bless now this bread and sanctify this cup of blessing. Fulfilling the word of your well-beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of Again after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. To do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Glory to you, Lord God, heavenly King. In this holy child, all lives are renewed and all sins forgiven by his life and holy passion, his resurrection and exaltation at your right hand. Let your spirit be upon us that as we partake of this holy mystery, we may be filled with your forgiving love and the promise of new life through this holy child. Join our prayers with those of Mary and Joseph and all your saints and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. <laughs>
Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are all who put their trust in him.
Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless the 